forward, but that's a positive looking team which could easily operate a 4 3 3 system with Mickey Weir on the flank and Gareth Evans joined through the middle by Steve Archibald, who starts his first match of the season after five appearances as a substitute. He's still to score this season, but he was Hibs top scorer last year with 16 goals. And young Paul Kane continues his new career at right back after a successful early year at Easter Road in attack and in midfield, and he's certainly proving to be a very valuable player indeed. Hearts send out the same 11 for the fourth match in a row with Wayne Foster retaining his place in attack to the exclusion of John Robertson who's on the bench alongside their recent signing from Rangers, Dave Kirkwood. And it's a first Edinburgh derby for Dave McCreary, the very experienced Northern Ireland international who will play a key role in the battle to win the centre of the field. And Hart's scoring hopes rest chiefly on 21-year-old Scott Crabb, who scored no fewer than 11 goals this season, but who plays this afternoon with heavy strapping on that thigh injury. And the referee this afternoon, and also from Edinburgh, Mr Andrew Waddle. So Hart start the match, forcing Hibs to play down the hill in the first half. Not their favoured way at the start of the match. And Hibs hoping to head back from the disappointment of three straight defeats. They've lost to Aberdeen and to Rangers by three goals to nil, and then lost again in midweek after extra time to FC Liège. So the league hopes stuttering a little with these two league defeats. Hearts at the same time making a good challenge in the early part of the season. And of course the Edinburgh Derby has something special in terms of importance of both sides. Well, Scott Crabb will head it on, Foster, and it's eased back by Cooper. Calming influence at the back for Hibs. Evans trying to turn. It's back with Cooper. No we are. Linking with Archibald and Collins. Looking for Evans, a good challenge made by McLaren. There's Gordon Hunter. And now Kane. Good play by Archibald, chesting that down for Brian Hamilton. Levine made the important challenge for Hearts. Collins. Now Brian Hamilton on the far side is Mitchell. Tackle came from Mackay. Sneddon. Safely taken in by Henry Smith. Kane's header gives Hearts the throw. Foster heavily tackled there by Kane. We'll take against the Hibs fullback. Changing a smile with Foster. Bad end to McKinley. Now Levine. Cahoon's layoff. There's Mackay. That's for Crab. It's great play from Hartz. Got him coming out. The free kick is given against Hartz. Scott Crabb is penalised and Crabb will be in trouble for his protests. Superb play, Cahoon to Mackay. He loved pass into the path of Crabb. There was Gorham. Crabb left his foot in there. The referee gave the free kick. And Crabb has been lectured sternly for his spot of descent. Across the back four to Paul Kane. Space for that pass to Weir, so it throws the hearts. I would want to see Mickey Weir seeing lots of possession on the flank. So far, he's been busy checking back in McKinley. Handball there by Crab. Kick taken quickly. Hamilton looking for Evans. And Levine concedes a needless corner kick. With the attempted pass back to Smith. Well, that is remarkable how often 
Corner kicks given away in such fashion, result in problems for the defence. Here Cooper has joined the attack for Hibbs. Leo back to Collins. That goes Mitchell. Smith is also in the box. Thurston wins the high ball. Bannon got a touch. Good play by Evans. He's away from McLaren. Back it goes towards Mitchell. And a fine save by Henry Smith. He must have seen that very late indeed. That was good goalkeeping. Well set up again by Hibbs. Hamilton to Evans, who slipped his man on McLaren, then pulled it back. Mitchell took it first time and a cross went Smith. Hunter playing it to the far side where Mitchell's made a good run again. Taking on Mackay. Out it goes, the corner kick is given, much to the consternation of Mackay. Okay, Mitchell has done well on the left for Hibbs so far in the match. Dead in number three in the box for Collins sending over the corner. Here's McCleary to Kane. Evans going across, brought down by Smith. And the referee has given a corner kick. Well, I can't see any way in which it was a corner kick, whatever it was. Evans clearly thought it was a penalty. There was Kane with a shot, lofted through there. A good ball by Mitchell. There was Gareth Evans, who got the ball for certainly played away, and that looked like a penalty kick. Up goes Smith, that's a fine save under pressure from Sneddon. Well, Henry Smith, the relieved man, I've no doubt, some two counts, making that good save, but also the fact that the referee gave the corner kick rather than a penalty kick, which seems to indicate the referee thought that Smith punched the ball behind for the corner when in fact he made no contact I reckon through the middle it goes for Cahoon he's onside that's great goalkeeping by Andy Gordon and McLaren now I mean to be careful with the pass back what a dead Jew there to Andy Gordon from Hibbs he realised the problem was there as that ball came through with Cahoon appearing to be well onside and Gordon killed the danger before it really began to Hamilton good play that's Kane again seeing a lot of the ball in the right back position for Hibbs Crab turns it back there's McKinley and Foster Crab tackle made by Kane very solid and effective now Mickey Weir Far post ball, Henry Smith had to be careful, the ball appeared to swirl in the air as it came towards the keeper. Good piece of handling. If you will, his favourite position, wide on the right, and well taken by Smith. Collins going in on McCleary, no free kick given. His head was low as Collins made the challenge. It's Foster now breaking on the right for Hearts. And a beautifully timed tackle again from Neil Cooper. Here's Cahoon. Now Foster pulling it back for Bannon. 32 minutes gone. The Hearts fans go wild as Eamon Bannon gives his team the lead. Cahoon did well, sidestepping away there from Neil Cooper. The shot ricocheting there into the path of Foster. This is a great pullback by Foster. Bannon coming in, Gorham got a touch, but he couldn't keep it out. And Hearts are in front. Well, Bannon's second goal of the season. Headed on by Hunter, there's McKinley. Cahoon doing well for Hearts. Fine play by Kane. Crab anticipating a headed pass back, which didn't come. Here's Collins. Using some pace to try to get away from McCleary. 
Free kick's been given. Very determined customer, Dave McCleary. Spoken to by the referee. There was Collins. And the tackle from McCleary. A lecture given to the Northern Ireland International. And it's free kick which Hibs have taken quickly. There's Mitchell. Looking for Archibald. Hibs have equalised. Steve Archibald's first of the season. And beautifully finished. Here was Graham Mitchell turning to his right foot. I just look at the way Archibald takes this. Easing the ball under the crossbar away from Henry Smith. That was striking of the highest class. Six minutes from half time. Easter Road lost to life as Hibs get back in little terms. Oh, what a match we now have in our hands. The difference made by a couple of goals. In all fairness, a little more than Hibs deserve in the balance of play so far. Turn away there by McPherson and the Hibs fans chant. Archie, Archie for this man, Steve Archibald. Now 33 years old, but capable still of these touches of class which can turn games. It's getting up to have Hamilton, so there's a happy man. Although you wouldn't know it from that expression, Alec Miller, the Hibs manager. Cooper did well, showing his composure, keeping his eye on the ball. Back to Mackay. Here he is again. Well, that was deflected behind for the corner kick to Hearts. Who always look menacing when they come forward. Gary Mackay doing a good job on the right side of the midfield. So perhaps some more work for Andy Gorham. Fastens <laughs> header, there's Crab and a ton. Great block there by Gorham. Well, superb striking play there by Scott Crabb. McPherson with a header, nodding that down. And look at the quality of this turn from Scott Crabb. Gorham seeing that very late and just getting down in time. And there's Mitchell playing it forward for Evans. And the whistle has gone for a free kick to Hart. An offside decision. Well, it really has been a very entertaining first 45 minutes with Hibs having a lot of the pressure, but Hearts looking very dangerous indeed every time they've managed to get forward. And they showed that with the first goal of the match. Of course, it hits the battle again. It was Eamon Bannon who got the opening goal. Half time after some great Edinburgh Derby entertainment and controversy raging. There's Steve Archibald who got the equalising goal, but controversy raging over a possible penalty kick for him to four and his goals are scored. Then Eamon Bannon in 32 minutes going in on a Wayne Foster cut back to beat Andy Gorham before that classical piece of head work from Steve Archibald from Graham Mitchell's cross made the half time score. Here it is the road. Hibs won, Hearts won. A couple of very significant changes in the Hearts lineup for the start of the second half. Eamon Bannon and Scott Crabb have not reappeared, allowing Dave Kirkwood there to play in the left side of midfield. And up front, John Robertson has replaced Crabb. Good starting the second half with the same lineup. And this match very evenly poised indeed. Hibs having a long spell on the ascendancy in the first half, and then Hearts scoring that goal, having a good spell themselves, but Hibs back in the game. And here come Hibs again with Paul Kane. That had to be carefully watched by Henry Smith in goal. Kane's got plenty of dig in that right boot, making a chance for himself, striding forward into the gap. McPherson seeing the danger coming across, as well taken by Smith. Kirkwood looking for Cahoon. Now McLaren. Foster being shattered there by Mitchell. Good running by Foster. 
Jens from Cooper straight to Gary Mackay. Now Cahun. Mackay again, and Robertson in the thick of it. He was offside. On the six yard line, John Robertson. And the offside flag is up, but Cahun turning that back inside the Hibs defence. Indecisive for a moment. And it was Robertson offside. Well, the Scotland national coach Andy Roxburgh, a very interested spectator, watching Andy Gorham, I reckon, in particular, and also, of course, Dave McFastens in the squad for the Norway game. Evans holding play up, waiting for support. McCurry wins it. Fasten now sees the chance to go forward. Brian Hamilton spots the danger for Hibbs. So does Collins. Evans playing it forward, and Archibald the judged offside. Not at all pleased about that, just inside the Hearts half. Well, Hearts almost paying for that with McPherson on the sortie upfield, being crowded out and hustled out of that. It was Evans who played it forward and Archibald bursting clear. on by Kirkwood Foster goes down this time Archibald is definitely onside and Henry Smith comes to meet him good goalkeeping and Archibald is offside again he's been too slow coming back As Mitchell is caught there by McLaren well, Archibald trying to spring this offside trap yeah, barging into Levine it was Smith who got there first John Cahoon for Hearts. Headed away by Hunter. Evans first to the ball this time. Kane wins it from Kirkwood. Here's Hamilton. Weird calls to the ball through the inside right position and it's cut off by Mike Carson. Suddenly the quality of the play is picked up again. So has the pace. Levine's header goes straight to Weir. Still weird in possession, well tackled by McCleary, there's no free kick, play continues. McCleary certainly free to play the ball, he's on the ground injured though. His hearts come forward, here's Cahoon. McKinley through the middle, out comes Gorham. Swooping superbly on the ball again. Still McCleary's on the ground, well inside the hearts half as Sneddon comes upfield. Back now with Archibald, Collins in space in the middle. Over on the far side is Weir. Still no McCreary for Hearts, he's out of the play as Weir sends the ball inside and McLaren turns it back. Well, Henry Smith this time, I think, playing the ball out. Well, he hasn't quite made it, yes, he's made it now, so the referee will allow attention for Dave McCreary. Let's see how that came about. There was Mickey Weir, well tackled by McKinley. Weir getting up, continuing inside. There was a tackle made there by McKinley. Certainly played the ball first and then took that knock, which has left him out of the play. So Dave McKinley going off with an injured left knee. The hearts reduced to 10 men. They've committed both their substitutes already. I think McDonald reorganizing things on the field. There's a change being made now by Hibbs. Mickey Weir is being withdrawn. The Hibs fans will not be happy about that. They are certainly very fond of Mickey Weir's talent. But he goes off, and the replacement is Dave Fellinger. Here's Neil Cooper. Levine's header finds Cahoon. Cooper steps in, winning the ball from Cahoon. Here's Neil Cooper. Well tackled by McPherson. First touch for Fellinger. Cooper again with a header. Well, he did well, forcing play forward, Neil Cooper. He's in a fine match at the back, but now showing his creative skills. Winning it neatly there, looking up, then making space for himself for a shot at goal. Well blocked by Dave McPherson. Still on the end of this chip ball from Fellinger. The header is off target. But Dave McCreary is back on the field with that knee strapped up. Expect to function at full tilt, I don't think. Well, but it's back through the middle for Cooper then to defend. 
Here's Kirkwood looking for Cahoon. Kane closes in from right back and takes no chances with the clearance. John Cahoon's header. There's McKinley. It's away from Fellinger. A long deep cross and Sneddon takes no chances. Turning it behind for the corner. So Hart's chance now to put pressure on and Andy Gorham may have work to do again. Here goes McPherson who's a major threat inside the Hibs penalty area at these set pieces. Kirkwood's corner. Up goes McPherson. Turned on by Cahoon but Hibs survive. Taken again by Kirkwood. Dave McCreary turning it back well for Cahoon. John Robertson. Robertson again! John Robertson at his best. Linking superbly around the box. This is when Robertson is so effective around the penalty box. McCreary with his brilliant back heeler while he's clearly handicapped. Then Cahoon to Robertson. The first time ball. He looked for the turn from Foster. And that would have been a great goal. And a great from the past. Dennis Law watching the match this afternoon here in a sponsorship arrangement. Good control from Archibald, but he was being shattered all the way there by Dave McPherson. The throw goes to Hartz. Levine linking with Robertson. Collins snapping at his heels. Snapping too fiercely, Gareth Evans will be in trouble. The Hearts players beaten to Evans by the referee under Waddle. Dave McPherson calming the Hearts men down. Craig Levine has taken a full brunt of that on the right shin. Stepping away from Collins. The free kick had been given for that challenge by John Collins, but then entered Gareth Evans. Well, wrapping that right shin of Levine. Booking of the match for Gareth Evans. A reckless late tackle on Levine. A player who's known all about serious injury over the last year or two, so let's hope this is no more than a bruise. Pat McGinley is going to come on to replace the player who's just been booked, Gareth Evans. Levine's header. Hunter comes to meet it. There's McGinley. Showing good control, turning away from McPherson. Fellinger goes on the outside. Archibald shows himself up front. Sent tumbling by Levine. Archibald reacting angrily. He wants to get on with the free kick. And the referee will now award with both Levine and Archibald. Leander Waddle calming things down. Steve Archibald pushing Levine away as he wanted to take that free kick quickly. Kane with the swerving effort. Not a bad shot that from Paul Kane, but Smith was behind it all the way. Fresh reacts well for Hearts at the back. Well, we're entering a stage in the match where you have the clear impression that both sides will settle for a draw rather than risk any disaster towards the end. There goes Archibald chasing. Levine is quick enough to get there ahead of him and to find Mackay. Tackle was made by Collins. Hip throw. Mitchell is number five, trying to find the hips player in space. Archibald asks for the ball, he's away from his man. Now Collins. Well saved by Smith. Well, that's remarkable the way Steve Archibald can find space. Turning inside, away from Levine, looking up to see Collins. Now here's Collins on his weaker foot to the right, but that's a good effort, well saved by Smith. Forward goes Kane. There's Archibald, back towards Kane. He's taken out of the play, right outside the box. Trouble here for Craig Levine. Superb play this from Hibbs. Here's Paul Kane, coming from his fullback position. 
Familiar target this though in midfield, linking with Archibald, a delightful ball played in, and Levine takes Kane right out of the play, quite deliberately. So there's trouble here for the Hearts defender. The yellow card for... The yellow card for Levine, there's more trouble going on here, Mitchell squaring up to McPherson, and Archibald too is going to be in trouble. He was trying to get the ball spotted for the free kick. And referee Underwood suddenly has this situation exploding out of control. Now the referee had a one with Archibald a few moments ago when he was upset about an earlier incident when he couldn't take a quick free kick. And now the same again, but this time it's resulting in a booking for Archibald. He's still complaining bitterly. After all, if that settles, it will be a free kick to Hibbs. There's the yellow card for Archibald, too. A great chance for Hibbs to win the match. This time, the referee is being much more diligent about the 10 yard rule, waving back the Hearts wall. Kane and Archibald setting up this free kick. Off the post from Archibald. McGinley couldn't turn it in. Well, Hibbs can scarcely believe it. Well, Steve Archibald rifling this past the wall, off the base of the post. Smith was beaten, all ends up. And it wouldn't run in front of Smith again for Hibbs. Well, we're now past the 90-minute mark. A bit of trouble here. John Collins having difficulty taking this corner kick. Well, this is tragic. The police are there, stewards are there. John Collins trying to take an in-swinging corner kick, and he's right in front of the hot supporters. Oh, referee Wardle having a word with a high-ranking police officer. Collins looking very calm. The hearts have cleared the danger for the moment. There goes Hunter. Challenge is made by McCreary. Throw goes to Hibbs. Alec McDonald is incensed, he was quite sure the last touch came from Hunter. Oh, what hectic action and drama right at the end of the Edinburgh derby. Hibbs pushing forward for all they're worth. Clearly will feel agreed that they don't win this match in view of that terrific free kick taken by Steve Archibald. It's too late now, there goes the final whistle, Hibbs. Steve Archibald leading the challenge at the end, having to settle for a point at home against Hearts. But what a dramatic end to the match. The second half, until the last five minutes or so, lost it undistinguished. And in the end, Hibbs will feel a little bit unlucky not to have won the match with that stunning late free kick from Archibald. The final score at Eastern Road, Hibbs won, Hearts won. The free kick at the end of the game almost won it. Steve, you looked very upset indeed, were you? Yeah, um, what I can remember is the left, the wall left a little, just enough gap to get a strike through, and uh, I hit it quite well. And it hit, actually hit the inside of the post, so I thought it was in, but I couldn't believe it when it came out. But even when it came out, Pat McGinley almost got onto the end. In fact, he did, and uh, the keeper did a good save. Some doubt about the your own first goal, in the sense that uh, someone was up in the comedy position thought it was a great goal, uh, and one or two thought ones. it was lucky. <laughs> what do you reckon? Well, I'd listen to the ones that said it was a great goal. <laughs> <laughs> What about your future then, Easter Road? You have indicated a wish to, to leave here, but you played today, played very well today. What does the future hold for you? Yeah, but that was the the transfer request was last season. It's nothing to do with this season. This season's a new season. Um, I've been injured for a long time, like you said, but this is my first game back. I'm not thinking about leaving. I'm just thinking about getting playing and getting properly match fit. And can the Hibs fans then expect to see you around playing like that for a good while yet? Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling I'm feeling strong. I just need uh, some more games under my belt, a little bit more uh, touch of the ball, a bit more practice. Um, I'm feeling good. Um, as long as I'm here, I'll give them 100% like I always have done. Steve can make a big contribution. Steve is, uh, I've said before, he's quality. He's a top draw stuff, Archibald. His movement, he's linking with players, his idea where players are. I mean, the goal shows that, that he's just kept the ball going and it's in beyond Henry. Uh, he can make a tremendous contribution here because he's an experienced pro and we've got a young squad. 
And will he be a part of the scene for the weeks to come with Keith yeah. Houch and back fit? Well, it's definitely. I mean, Steve playing the way he played the day, uh, you can't keep him out. You must have been very happy, though, I think, with that uh, first goal. How do you feel about the build-up to that? Yeah, I thought it was, I think that was the only piece of football we'd played at that time. And, um, I mean, we come here trying to do that, but in saying that, we managed to get a goal off it and um, we were delighted at that time. I think if you see the goal, at the, the one we lost, it'll look a wee bit... Um, a bit silly because I think Steve Archibald knew what the ball was, you know. But in saying that, that's what it's all about. Oh, we were giving him more credit than that. We thought he had done it quite well, actually. <laughs> well, if you if you watch that jock, you'll see he's looking at me, actually, you know, just to make sure I wasn't going to mark him. But Well, I still think it was a great goal, I must say. Now, last week, Jim Duffy resigned as manager of Falkirk on a point of principle related to the behaviour of certain players off the field. And that gave him the chance to watch his first Edinburgh derby yesterday. Welcome, Jim. What were your impressions? Well, it was just a typical derby, I think, Jock. You know, plenty of effort, commitment, but just a wee bit of lack of flair. Lack of flair. And, of course, Hibbs, though, showed some flair, I think, maybe early in the game. They started very well, didn't they? They looked to be very impressive. And, in fact, when they were on top, they had that penalty incident, remember, uh, early on when it looked to me certainly that it might have been a penalty. What do you think? Yeah, well I think it was. I think Gareth Evans' pace here gets him just to the ball in front of Henry Smith. And I think you see Henry's reaction here, he's a wee bit worried. Um, because uh, Gareth just touches the ball past him and he carries on and brings him down. So for, for me it was a definite penalty. And he didn't look too concerned about the fact a corner was given either, Henry. That might have been another indication he was very relieved. Yeah, that's right. I think he heard the referee's whistle blown and he knew it wasn't a corner so he thought it must be a penalty. And of course what happens in a situation like that against the run of play, Hearts go in front and that again coming from I think only the second attack of the match. Yeah it was about the first time in the match actually that John uh, Cahoon ran directly at the defence and there was a kind of double ricochet here that falls to Wayne Foster and a good finish there from uh, Eamon Bannon coming out of the back post. Question for you there, judging Andy Gorham by the highest standard, international standards, could he have done better here? No I personally don't think so because the ball goes through Paul Kane's legs here as you see and I think that, that maybe just unsighted Andy just, uh, just enough to put him off. So no blame to Andy Gorham? No, not for me anyway. Right. Now, of course, Hibs had to come back quickly. They did. We've heard differing views already about that uh, Steve Archibald goal. I've clearly stated my position. What do you think? Well, I think Steve Archibald knew exactly what he was going to do here. I think, and you can see his reaction. He's walked away before the ball's in the net. Uh, as the ball comes over, he's, he's actually, he's underneath it, and he just lofts it over Henry here. And he's, he's already away with his hand in the air before the ball reaches the net. Now, Steve Archibald did make a very interesting contribution to the game coming back after the long layoff. He did seem to show touches of class, did he not? Yeah, I think that was right. Uh, he's the one quality player, I think, that stood out on the field. His first touch and his linking up play was superb. I think uh, Alec Miller mentioned that after the game. Um, but everything that came, um, any danger that came from Hibs, uh, was almost directly through Archibald. There clearly are some personality difficulties relating to Archibald's presence at Easter Road, but really with this quality of play, this pass particularly, this kind of play must make him a very important player for them. Yeah, that's right. Well, as I said, uh, I think the other players respond to a player like Archibald, and you see here with the free kick as well. It's a tremendous strike and very unfortunate not to get in the back of the net. The thing to do with that one, he seemed to want to push people out the way to take the free kick. He yeah, wanted to get people like Paul Kane and John Collins over the ball there, but Archibald was having none of it. He's already told them he's taking the free kick, and that shows that he's enthusiastic enough and determined enough to get that ball in for the winner. And the kind of player, perhaps, who gives a little bit of a lift to the Premier League in the terms of the, the guts and toil. Yeah, well, he's, he just makes the, the game look a bit uh, simpler than it actually is, and especially in derby matches where it is a bit hurly burly. He just seems to be a bit of composure that makes it uh, a better game to watch, better game for supporters. The Hurley Burley you mentioned, of course, was in the middle of the park in particular. There was one key midfield battle. There was Dave McCreary was marking John Collins. Now, we asked Dave McCreary what he thought of John Collins. I knew, I know John, uh, obviously, from reports uh, in Scotland, even when, we were, when I was in England. But um, he's a good, very good uh, young player, and uh, I can see he's got a great future. Now here was John, he was playing in a central midfield role, which is his favourite position. How did you rate this performance? Yeah, well John Collins done uh, very well yesterday, worked really hard. And you see him battling here and then playing a the pass. And he's also moving on to see if he can get in the end of something else as well. And again, linking with Steve Archibald here. He's won a tackle in midfield. And you see McCready at him as usual. And he's battled away. I think he actually loses the ball here and wins it back again. And then this is when he's more positive, putting a lovely ball through to Mickey Weir on the wide right. That's one of the criticisms, perhaps, of John Collins, again, judging him by very high standards, is the lack of telling passes sometimes into forward areas. Yeah, I, mean, I think you've got somebody's experience with Dave McCready hounding you for 90 minutes, mind you. It makes it that wee bit more difficult to do that. Uh, that certainly wouldn't help him, but he did look to be a quality player, and perhaps uh, of interest to Andy Roxburgh was watching.
Well, maybe not for that's for the Norway game, but certainly in the future, I think he's got a, a real good future in the game, and I think that if he um, works as hard as he did yesterday, then he'll go a long way in the game. So, so much for that game. Jim Duffy, future coming up, what's it hold for you? Well, I'm just the other uh, ex-manager now, being a vulture, sitting waiting in uh, misfortune befalling somebody else to see if I can get back into football. We'll just have to wait and see if Hen comes up. Hope you're back shortly. Thanks very much, Jim. Thanks again, Jock. We'll take a break now. Still to come, football.